Antidiuretic hormone and oxytocin are the topics of this screencast. You may find information on this subject in Chapter 9 of your textbook. This screencast was designed to help you achieve the following objectives. Describe the anterior and posterior pituitary glands. For antidiuretic hormone and oxytocin, describe the following. Stimulus of secretion, chemistry, whether it's hydrophilic or hydrophobic, target tissue and effect, and regulation. Lastly, describe the effects of reduced ADH secretion. If you recall, the hypothalamus is the inferior portion of the diencephalon of the brain, and attached to the hypothalamus is a grape-like structure called the pituitary gland. Both the pituitary gland and the hypothalamus are both very important endocrine organs that produce hormones. The pituitary gland is a bit of a misnomer. It is not one single gland, but actually two organs in one. The anterior portion is called the anterior pituitary gland, and it contains glandular tissue, cuboidal cells which produce various hormones. The posterior pituitary gland, in contrast, is actually composed of nervous tissue. Nervous tissue that is actually an extension of the hypothalamus. Recall that the pituitary gland is surrounded by the cella tersica, or Turkish saddle, of the sphenoid bone of the skull. In this screencast, we will focus solely on the posterior pituitary gland and the two hormones that it secretes. We will save further discussion of the anterior pituitary gland and the many hormones that it releases for upcoming screencasts. Notice that axon terminals are found in the posterior pituitary gland, and these axon terminals are of neurons where the cell bodies are located in the hypothalamus. So we have neurons or at least the cell bodies of those neurons in the hypothalamus where the hormones ADH, antidiuretic hormone, and oxytocin are produced and packaged into secretory vesicles. These secretory vesicles then move through the axon of the neuron which extends through the pituitary stalk into the axon terminals found in the posterior pituitary gland. When the neuron produces an action potential, instead of releasing neurotransmitters, the axon instead releases these hormones, antidiuretic hormone and oxytocin. And these hormones are released into a capillary bed in the posterior pituitary gland that leads to venules, venules to veins, which then leads to the systemic circulation where these hormones will be taken all over the body. Antidiuretic hormone promotes water retention by the kidney and oxytocin is involved in smooth muscle contractions associated with childbirth and breast milk letdown. First, let's talk about antidiuretic hormone abbreviated ADH. Antidiuretic hormone reduces the movement of water from the blood into the renal tubules of the kidneys to form urine. Diuresis is the production of urine. Antidiuretic hormone therefore decreases diuresis, decreases the production of urine. Now why would you want a reduction in the production of urine? Well, if you were not consuming sufficient amounts of liquids, the result would be a decrease in blood volume, which would result in a decrease in blood pressure and an increase in the concentration of solutes in your blood or an increase in blood osmolarity. Therefore, a decrease in blood pressure or a increase in blood osmolarity both stimulate the release of antidiuretic hormone. 
Antidiuretic hormone therefore helps maintain blood volume and pressure by retaining more water in the blood and also helps prevent dehydration. Antidiuretic hormone secretion is regulated by a classic negative feedback mechanism as blood osmolarity decreases or as blood pressure increases back toward the normal range, this reduces further secretion of antidiuretic hormone. Antidiuretic hormone is a peptide hormone, therefore it's hydrophilic and binds receptors on the plasma membrane of its target cells. In some individuals, ADH production is below normal, what's called hyposecretion of ADH, and this causes a condition called diabetes insipidus. Now, this is not diabetes that's associated with blood sugar levels. In this condition, because of the below normal secretion of ADH, the individual produces large amounts of very dilute urine, sometimes as much as 10 liters of urine a day. Therefore, the patient is constantly thirsty and must consume large amounts of water just to prevent dehydration. Alcohol consumption inhibits the release of antidiuretic hormone. This is why alcohol consumption has a dehydrating effect. It's also why you urinate more after consuming alcoholic beverages than you would if you consumed the equal amount of water or juice or soda. In fact, a hangover or the morning after effect of excessive alcohol consumption is mainly dehydration where the body has lost more water than has been taken in. Now that we have discussed antidiuretic hormone, now let's talk about the second hormone released by the posterior pituitary gland, oxytocin. And oxytocin facilitates childbirth and the letdown effect where milk is ejected from the breast during suckling. Oxytocin is released from the posterior pituitary gland in response to neural stimuli. Receptors in the breast detect pressure during suckling or during the birthing process. Receptors in the uterus detect pressure and send sensory input to the brain, resulting in the release of oxytocin. During labor, oxytocin, once released, enters the blood and causes the progression of labor contractions associated with the birthing process. During suckling, oxytocin causes the smooth muscles of the breast to eject milk during suckling. The cerebral cortex can also play a role in the release of oxytocin. Women who are breastfeeding can sometimes hear a baby cry or think about their child, and that can cause the release of oxytocin, resulting in milk ejection from the breast as well. Oxytocin, like antidiuretic hormone, is also a peptide hormone, therefore it is hydrophilic and binds receptors on the plasma membranes of its target cells. Oxytocin is one of the few hormones that is regulated through a positive feedback mechanism, and this is easily illustrated if we look at the effect of oxytocin on the progression of labor. So here we have a fetus uh, that is close to term, we'll say, you know, pretty close to nine months of age. So we have a fetus of considerable size in the uterus. That fetus is going to be pushed against the cervix, and there are receptors, pressure receptors in that cervix that respond to pressure of the, of the head of the fetus and sends impulses to the brain, sensory input. In response, the brain the hypothalamus specifically is going to release oxytocin into the posterior pituitary gland. That oxytocin is going to be carried by the bloodstream to the uterus where the oxytocin causes smooth muscles in the walls of the uterus to contract. When those muscles contract, the uterus gets smaller and it pushes 
the fetus against the cervix. This increases the number of receptors in the walls of the cervix and uterus that are stimulated and then they send more impulses to the brain resulting in more release of oxytocin resulting in a greater number of smooth muscle cells contracting they contract more often they contract with greater frequency which causes further pushing of the fetus against the cervix activating more receptors causing the release of more oxytocin and so forth and so on and this cycle continues until birthing occurs after birthing occurs pressure in the uterus drops way low you no longer have the head of the fetus pushing against the cervix and so effectively the positive feedback me mechanism is broken Let's now look at how oxytocin is stimulated to be released during suckling. So when a newborn suckles at the breast, the sucking action stimulates receptors in the breast, causing those receptors to send neural impulses to the hypothalamus. In response to those neural impulses, the hypothalamus causes the release of oxytocin by the posterior pituitary gland. The oxytocin enters the bloodstream and is carried to the mammary glands. There it causes smooth muscles to contract, releasing or ejecting milk from the breast, what's called the milk letdown or milk letdown reflex. As the milk is ejected, the newborn continues to suckle. As the newborn suckles, he or she continues to stimulate those receptors, which continues to send sensory input to the hypothalamus, which continues to release oxytocin, causing continued contraction of the smooth muscles and release of the milk. And this cycle continues until the newborn is satiated and stops suckling. At that point, the cycle is broken, no further oxytocin is released, and there's no further release of milk from the breasts. We've discussed the role that oxytocin plays in the letdown reflex during suckling and also during the progression of labor during the birthing process. But what about the effects of oxytocin in men and non-pregnant females? Because oxytocin is present in both of these groups. The effects of oxytocin on men and non-pregnant females is not clear. There is some evidence that oxytocin may interact with the brain to induce parental behavior in these groups. There is also some evidence that oxytocin may be partly responsible for the feelings of pleasure that occur during and after sexual intercourse. I speculate that if oxytocin is indeed responsible for the feelings of pleasure that occur after sexual intercourse, that perhaps oxytocin may be able to explain the different behaviors between men and women after sexual intercourse. It's generally accepted that after sexual intercourse, men tend to roll over and go to sleep, while women tend to want to engage in conversation and cuddle. Perhaps this difference between men and women is due to differing responses to oxytocin. Now let's review the objectives of the screencast. Describe the anterior and posterior pituitary glands. For antidiuretic hormone and oxytocin, describe the following. Stimulus of secretion. Chemistry, whether the hormones are hydrophilic or hydrophobic. Target tissue and effect. And lastly, regulation. Also, describe the effects of reduced ADH secretion. The topic of the next screencast will be hormones of the anterior pituitary gland.